Good morning, Derby City Church. It's great to see you. Spring is here. Lighter nights, lighter mornings. I hope you're feeling well. We've got a great day for you. We've got uh, Dan, who's going to bring the word. We've got some great testimonies from the Teen Challenge uh, uh, boys. And Rachel's going to bring us uh, some prayer as well. We're going to pray and then uh, we're going to lead into the testimonies from the Teen T Challenge boys. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for, Lord, this new day, Lord, that you have lined up for us. Father, we pray, Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit would speak to us through your word, through the worship, through the testimonies, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are changing lives, even in lockdown. And Father, we want to give you all the glory this morning. So, Lord, we open our hearts, we open our minds to all that you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me hand you over to the Teen Challenge, boys. Good evening, Derby City Church. My name is Michael. I'm from Belfast in Northern Ireland. And I came to England on the 15th of July, 2019, to do a Teen Challenge programme. Um, I had ruined my life. I had destroyed every relationship I had due to drugs and my behaviour. I was just a horrible human being. I was bitter, angry, cold-hearted and I had lost everything. I'd hit rock bottom. Um, when I came to the program, I just, something just changed, you know. I, I met with Jesus and he changed me from the inside out. You know, it's, it's incredible when I look back. He has restored everything. My relationship with my parents, you know, they tell me they're proud of me and that they love me. And it's just an incredible feeling. Um, my brother that didn't speak to me for a couple of years, he actually picked me up from the airport when I went home from my first weekend. Um, my ex-partner told me that she was proud of me and she's now letting me build a relationship with my son. I speak to my son almost every day and when I get the chance to go home, I get to see him almost every day. You know, it's just, it's incredible. All glory goes to God. You know, it's when I look back and I reflect on my life and see how far I've come, it is just supernatural, you know, it's, it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for God. And it's just, it leaves me in awe when I think about it. Um, and now I have hope. I've got a future, you know. I'm, I'm not, I'm completely different than the person I was when I came. I'm not bitter, angry, nothing. I'm happy now. I'm filled with joy, you know, and I look forward to life. I'm actually living now for the first time in my life instead of existing. I am at the Leadership Academy at the minute in Teen Challenge and I hope to go on and open a centre back in Northern Ireland and bring people the hope that someone brought me, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, there's so many broken people out there and they need to hear the gospel. And that's what I plan on doing. All glory goes to God and I thank him every day for what he's done in my life. Without him, I would be nothing and I would have nothing. And I thank him for it. All glory goes to him. Amen. Thank you for listening. Hello, church. My name's Ben. Um, as you can probably tell by my dodgy farmer's accent, I'm not actually from around here. I'm Bristol born and bred. Um, I'm currently living in Nottingham though, doing the Team Challenge Leadership Academy. Um, this is a follow on from me completing the rehabilitation programme early this year in January. Um, and yeah, I just just give it, thank you all for giving me this opportunity to share what God's done in my life and I really do truly feel blessed of where I've come from and where I'm at today. It's just such a such a 180. And yeah, just brief description. My life was filled with crime and drugs and all the bad stuff, all sin, all sin. And since becoming to know God and having that relationship with him is just just so, so blessed of what he's done in my life. And I just, yeah, I owe all the glory to God. I've got my family back. I've got my life back. And, and yeah, one of the big things that I struggle with for all my life is forgiveness. I couldn't forgive others for what they've done to me. And not only that, I couldn't forgive myself for what I've done to them. Um, and, yeah, through Jesus, he's really worked on me, on, on forgiveness, about forgiving others and also myself. And, yeah, i just truly blessed that... There's places like Team Challenge that have helped people like me and get our lives back on track. And 
yeah, I know what the one thing they do offer here it is Jesus. And that's the thing we stand by in our darkest hours. And we also stand by it in our glorious hours. So I just thank you. Thank you for that, Jesus. And one, one scripture that I've really held close to my heart since doing this program and since knowing Jesus is Joshua 1.9. Um, most of you are probably aware of what it is, but I'm just going to say it now anyway. And have I not commanded you to be strong, courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Um, what a verse. What a verse. And it's just something that has really spoke to me through the Bible and continues to speak to me every time I read it. It gives me renewed strength. So, yeah, I just want to thank you for this opportunity you've given me to speak now. And you never know one day I might be sat and up, stood up in the front preaching to you all. Thank you. God bless.
Hi church, this week our children and young people will be returning to school. Some of them will be feeling happy about this and excited that they get to see their friends and to be back in the classrooms with their teachers. Others will be feeling nervous about going back, so maybe even sad that they can't spend as much time with their families as they have been over the past few months. And others may be feeling a bit anxious and a bit stressed over these new forms of assessments that they will have in the next coming weeks and months. So I would love it if you would join me in praying for them this morning. Lord, I thank you for our incredible children and young people here at DCC. I thank you that you know them, Lord, that you know exactly how they're feeling about going back tomorrow. And I just pray that they would just know your presence this week as they walk around the school building and they just go back into the routine of school, Lord. I pray that they would know that you are close by to them, Lord, and that they'll remember your promise that says that you will never leave them or forsake them. I pray that they will just feel your peace this week, that if they're feeling worried or anxious, that these feelings will just melt away and your peace will just overtake all of those feelings, Lord. I pray for uh, our children and young people that may have these assessments coming up, Lord. I pray that, that even though they're different to what they expected, Lord, that they would just give it all to you, that they will trust in you, Lord, and that they will remember your promise that says that you have plans and purposes for our lives, Lord plans to give us hope and a future and I just pray that that they would just trust you Lord. I lift each and every one of them up to you this week Lord. Amen. Well good morning Derby City Church, so good to be with you today. Amazing that we can just spend some time just praying for our children and young people. Thank you Rachel for leading us in that. Our hearts go out to that amazing generation and we are thinking of you guys as you go into your schools this week and uh, we hold you in our prayers for sure. This morning I want to encourage us as a church um, through the Bible we're going to be in Acts 2 um, and we're just going to look at the early church, um, how they started, how they began. Um, if we look at the start of Acts 2, uh, the, it's the day of Pentecost, the, the Spirit has been poured out on uh, all people. There's been a group of people, about 120, that have been meeting, waiting for this promise that Jesus said that would be given. And the Spirit has been just poured out uh, over, over the people that have been waiting for this. And uh, those that follow Jesus closely have been filled with the Spirit in order to preach the good news, to preach the news in, in various languages. We see that as we go into Acts 2 a little bit more. We see one of the, the close followers of Jesus, Peter, addressing the crowd, declaring the Old Testament prophecy uh, spoken through Joel on how God will pour out his spirit on all people. He spoke of how Jesus was the Messiah, the one who came to fulfill everything that had been spoken. Coming towards the end of Acts 2, we begin to see this incredible impact it is having on the, on the people. Many are coming to faith, repenting being baptised, trusting in Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. And as we read in verse 41 of Acts 2, we see the number, about 3,000 being added that day. Amazing. Then we begin to see this beautiful picture of the church starting. And I'm just going to read these verses from Acts 2, verse 42. It says this, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Wow. Amazing verses of what is happening around these people who are uniting together around Jesus, sharing life with one another. Pastor Andy has really encouraged and challenges, challenged us over the past few weeks in how we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. He has challenged us with this question, are we creating 
the right environment for the Spirit of God? Are we creating the right environment in meeting with Jesus? Maybe we don't spend that much time around God's Word as we should. Maybe we don't spend that much time serving God as we should or sharing God with others because there's lots of things in this world that consume us and distract us. But what we have just read here in Acts 2 shows a group of people coming together, sharing lives with one another and devoting themselves to Jesus. It's a beautiful picture. And the heart of my message for you this morning is simply this. Life is better when we are in it together. See, there is something very beautiful, attractional and powerful when the temples of the Holy Spirit join with one another. It says in verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I just want to encourage us this morning with this to start with that we are stronger. We are stronger when we are devoted to Jesus together. This early church ultimately was devoted to the good news of Jesus. It was their foundation of their Christian faith. It all centered around Jesus. See, when Jesus is about to ascend to heaven and be with his Father, he gave his close followers the responsibility and authority to teach in his name. Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20, it says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The real heart of the teachings from the apostle was all Jesus-centered. The core of their teaching was everything who Jesus is in what he taught and what he has done for us. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that enabled these close followers of Jesus to teach the good news of Jesus. And these people were devoted to the good news of Jesus, just hearing his word, hearing the word of God. Let's continue as a church to be strengthened by the good news of Jesus by dedicating ourselves to the word of God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Let us never drift away from the word of God. It is his word that speaks life, his word that speaks hope and goodness, his word that we should take delight in. In this passage, we see a picture of people loving life together and it all involved around the word of God. David says in the Psalms as he starts Psalm 1, in the very start of the Psalms, he says that we find joy and delight as we choose to meditate on God's word day and night. See, we are stronger when we choose to be devoted to the word of God, to the good news of Jesus. Good news is found, really good news is found right in the Word of God, right in, in the Scriptures. Good news is really found in the person of Jesus, which we unpack more through the Word. See, there is something not quite right if we begin to lose the excitement of the Gospel. The Gospel message is the best message anyone could ever hear. It is news which transforms people's lives, as we see in Acts 2. It is news that brings hope, that brings joy, that brings life. It is really good news that we should continue to take delight in. Are you excited this morning about the good news of Jesus? Are you excited today? We need to devote ourselves to the Word of God, to bring it alive, in our hearts, to bring it alive in, in, in every situation. See, they learnt more and more about Jesus by devoting themselves to him. One way I like to get into the word is by sharing it with other people. That's why we have life groups. 
We have online life groups. When we read scripture, it comes alive when we share with one another. Another practical way that we've done it over the year with our young people, we have a, a, a version Bible app. Many people know about it and you can journey through a plan together and you can share what you believe God is saying to you. Each day you can journey with one another. There is lots of different ways that we can just devote ourselves to the word of God. Let's together continue to learn more about who Jesus is by talking about him together, by reading about him, obeying him and remembering what he has done. We are stronger as we devote ourselves to Jesus together. They, do, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the breaking of bread. The church lived in remembrance together. Even when it was so close to the time Jesus being crucified, the early church knew it was important to never forget what Jesus had done. They broke bread together, remembering the sacrifice Jesus went through. Never forget what Jesus has done for us. Never forget. Live in remembrance. One amazing lady in our church, I spoke to her a few days ago, and she said I was okay to share this story. Uh, most of the church family will know her, Jean. Um, she lives opposite us, and um, just a, an amazing woman of God. Over the year, she's not been able to stream into our online services. She's not, just not had the um, facilities to be able to do that. But I post sermon notes to her along with a few other people who are unable to stream. And um, she tells me that every Sunday she has a rhythm of reading the sermon notes and taking communion every single week, remembering the sacrifice that Jesus has done for her. This has been her worship. Even though she's not been able to connect with us online, she has demonstrated how she is very much still with us by devoting herself to the Lord. Amazing. And she said to me the other day, you know, I, I don't feel alone. There's always two of us. He's always with me. She knows that because she's devoting herself to Jesus. She's living in remembrance. We are stronger when we continue to meet with Jesus together. They devote themselves to prayer. The church focused on speaking to God together. We are stronger when we seek Jesus together. The early church devoted themselves to prayer. See, if we don't pray, then do we believe? See, prayer is simply talking to God. Jesus says when two or three gather in my name, I am with them. I am with you. Over the year, this church, Derby City Church, has been devoted to prayer every single week. Why? Because we believe. We believe God is with us. We believe God is going to reveal wonderful truths about us. We believe God will answer our prayer, and he has done. He's answered our prayers over the, over the year. God has been with us. We pray because we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And it's been amazing to do this together. And we continue to do this because we want to grow together in our relationship with Jesus. We acknowledge that we can't do life on our own. We need Jesus. Let's together continue to be, become stronger followers of Jesus by being devoted to Jesus. Life is better when we are in it together. Secondly, I want to say to us this morning is that we are better when we live in harmony with one another. Verse 44 and 46, these words, it says in Acts, 42, in Acts 2, all the believers were together and had everything in common. Every day they continued to meet in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. The message translation says they lived in a wonderful harmony. See, the church is at its best when everyone is in it together. Derby City Church, you have been incredible over the year on not giving up on meeting together. It's been those phone calls, 
online meetings where we have connected and cared for one another. We have demonstrated that it's not just about the Sunday. Church is not a Sunday. Church is every day. It is who we are. See, we may not be able to meet in the church building every day, but we can be the church every day. We can choose love, kindness. We can choose grace, forgiveness, joy, hope. We can choose others. We can choose Jesus every day. This is being in harmony with one another. We are together when we share that same heart as each other. And we begin to have this wonderful harmony among ourselves. I love that this church, as we read in Acts 2, 42, focused on eating together. That's good, isn't it? Having food. I love sharing food together. I just love food. Um, and I love it that it's biblical. This is fellowship. I know we're waiting for the days where we can invite friends and family around our dining room table and share food, to, share food with one another. We are ready for that, I'm sure. Can you remember the days when we were in the Hope Centre? Bring and share, chaos. Hope Centre Cafe was just packed with, with people sharing just just shed load of food. Amazing. It is what we did. Because we love spending time with one another. It was where relationships grew and new friendships began. Often the significant, powerful conversations happen around food. See, even though we've not been able to do that like we would over the year, there's still been a way. You know, we can complain about now, because we've done it for so long, about these online Zoom meetings. Let's freshen it up. Get on there with some food with your friends. Share with one another. Don't allow Zoom to play on your boring mindset. Take advantage of it. Fellowship with one another. Have food nights with one another. Next week, we're having a men's curry night on Zoom because it's great. And, um, and it's biblical. And it helps us to be real with one another. It helps us to relax and share life with one another. This is a wonderful harmony. See, God has provided a way where we can still be together. Let's continue to devote ourselves to him. Let's live in harmony with one another. Have that same heart. The Bible says that as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We all need this. We need other temples of the Holy Spirit to help us. Life is better when we choose to be in it together. Finally, I just want to close with this. The church, it will increase. We will increase as we live joyfully together. Verse 47, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. They praise God. Enjoying the favour of all people, and the Lord added to their number. See, the attraction is really found in true fellowship with one another. The way we love one another, being kind and generous to one another, the way we care for one another, the way we meet the family as we do online church, the way we praise God together, all of this is attractional. See, we can, often, we can often fall into the trap of comparison, comparing how we do church to others. We, we see other churches have these fancy lights, the modern building, all looks visually attractional. And, and we, we believe that's important. It is important. We have fancy lights. We have invested in good cameras so you can watch us on the, on the screen at home. It is important to have, but it is important that this does, not come, this does not become our attraction. The attraction is not found in the equipment we have. Real attraction is found in us. It is found in us, the church. See, I love in the message translation, it says, as they, as they were exuberant and joyful as they praised God, people in general liked what they saw. 
They liked what they saw. Real attraction is found in us as we fellowship with one another, as we be in it, as we choose to live life together. See, people are longing for belonging. You might be streaming in this morning thinking, what is all of this really about? Well, ultimately, it's all about Jesus. And we are just a group of people who share life together. We share our high moments and our low moments. And it is when we choose to be in life together where we can live with joy. It is when we choose life with Jesus, when we can live with joy. We are the temples of the Holy Spirit who are filled with joy. We know we cannot go through life on our own. On our own, we struggle. But God has made us to be with one another and to be together with him. There is something really beautiful, powerful, attractional, when the temples of of the Holy Spirit join with one another. I really believe, Derby City Church, that as we continue to choose to devote ourselves to Jesus, as we decide to live in harmony with one another, and as we choose to live joyfully together, we will increase. We will increase. I want to encourage you this morning to keep on being close to one another. The day will come when we are physically close, but we can still be close right now. Never give up on meeting together. Do not be distant because life is better when we're in it together. Let's follow Jesus, enjoy the journey and see people come to know him as they see us. It is the Lord Jesus that continues to build his church. We are the church. May God bless you this morning. Thank you. This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me Who breaks the power of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings Shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me With truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory The King above all kings Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory The King above all kings This is amazing grace 
This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, oh, oh Jesus I sing for All that you've done for me the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy Worthy, worthy, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me Oh, 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 Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Thank you, Dan, for that word. It might be that uh, something what Dan said there, or maybe something in the testimonies earlier on, or possibly something in the songs really really caused you to think maybe you're brand new to faith maybe you want to know more well we'd love to help you and you can get in touch with us on dan at derbycitychurch.co.uk and we'd be very pleased to uh, to help you discover more about jesus we'd like to get to know you a little bit more you're very welcome to join us on the church chat rooms which are starting at 11 30. go and get a, a cup of coffee and a biscuit and, uh, and come and join us on that. You can find out how to do that if you just message us and, uh, and we'll give you the, the Zoom password. You can give to Derby City Church and we do thank you for everybody that gives regularly. And to do that, you can go to the DCC website and uh, click on the Give page there. All the other information about the church, what's going on midweek is on the website. So uh, make your way there. Thank you for joining us today. We do pray that everything that's been said is encouraging to you and, uh, and we hope that uh, coming up very, very soon, you might hear more about how we're going to work towards meeting again physically. God bless you. Have a great day.